And we are back with another episode of Before You Buy, the show where we give you some straight-up gameplay and our first impressions of the latest games releasing. Hey, folks, it is Falcon. And today, we are talking about the Nier Replicant re-release. As you probably know, I'm a huge fan of the Nier series and am grateful to be doing this one for you. So before we get into the nitty-gritty of Nier Replicant, let's talk a little bit about its history. Nier Replicant was originally released for the Xbox 360 and the PS3 way back in 2010 in the US. And the original Nier is a game that built up a strong cult following over the years. It was a game with some unique and interesting ideas, but it was stuffed into a kind of archaic package. So it's been just over 10 years, and after the surprise success of the follow-up, Nier Automata, the original game has been remade as Nier Replicant, version 1.2247-4487-139... A name that is as idiosyncratic as the series creator, Yoko Taro. For simplicity's sake, we're just calling it Nier Replicant, even though that's technically the name of the Japanese PS3 version. Uh, we never got that version over here, so we're just going to call it that. We don't want to get into numbers every single time. In a lot of ways, this version of the game acts as an introduction to the many people who missed out on Nier when it originally came out. There's two kinds of people probably interested in this remake, those who love the original, who want to see some of its rougher edges sanded down a little bit, and those who've either played or heard of Nier Automata and want to know what the deal is. We at Game Ranks, uh, we actually all played the original game on the Xbox 360 when its status as a cult classic started to build up, so we do have some history with the series. The story, at least at the very start, is very simple. You play as a kid who's watching over a sick sister named Yona, who's been afflicted with a strange disease known as the Black Scrawl. He goes on a quest to discover the way to cure her, and on the way, you gotta fight all these strange monsters called Shades. Early on in the story, you find a book that gives you the power to fight these things. The main goal, at first, is to collect the sealed verses, which grant you new powers. The eventual goal of the game is to hunt down the Shadow Lord, the supposed leader of the Shades. If you think it all sounds pretty standard, at this point, you're you're pretty much right. Story begins as kind of a cliche JRPG plot before slowly revealing itself as something more interesting. Hard part is that the opening sections of the game are definitely its slowest. I mean, you're going to find a, a lot of fetch quests, a lot of backtracking, uh, it's not a ton of stuff happening. I, I'm not going to say that it's bad, but it's definitely the slowest part of the game. Bosses are definitely a highlight, but outside of those, it really takes a while for the game to build up steam. However, it gets a lot better. Um, Important thing to note is that this remake really accurately captures the experience of playing the original game. In terms of story and structure, it's basically the same. So don't go into this one thinking that the original game has been reworked to be more like automata in structure. It really has not. The slow opening dozen or so hours, uh, it's a faithful recreation for better or worse. There are some new things to experience if you are a veteran of the original, but we really won't go into any of that here. The main thing we want to emphasize is that if you're coming into this game after Nier Automata and just play it for a few hours and put it down thinking, ugh, this is nothing like Nier Automata, uh, just stick with it. The good stuff's coming. Unlike Automata, which starts out relatively bizarre and only gets crazier as it goes along, Near Replicant hits you with a confusing opening and then spends a long time as a normal JRPG and then totally subverts those ideas much later. The game almost plays like a parody of a standard RPG narrative, so it requires a level of patience from the player to fully experience. And it, I mean, it slowly introduces familiar elements to the game and then sort of masterfully finds ways to tear them down. One thing that can keep you playing early are the characters. Like, along the way, you meet eccentric people like Grimoire Weiss, a floating book with a haughty attitude, Kane, a woman with a ridiculous outfit and a filthy mouth that is half shade, actually probably the character that's going to remind you most of Nier Automata, at least in aesthetic and affect, and Emil, a floating skeleton boy with a grotesque head, I mean, thing, like, I don't know how to describe this. Saying the cast is weird is a huge understatement, but the game does a really good job developing those characters, even the initially bland MC. 
And yeah, like near Automata, in order to get the real, complete, actual experience, you got to finish the game multiple times. It is a big thing to ask someone to do, but believe us when we say it is very worth doing. I know we're being vague here, but a huge part of the fun of the Nier series, not just this game, is discovering stuff on your own. It's a story that's really only possible in video games, and this game is considered groundbreaking for a reason. So how does it play? I mean, we've spent a ton of time talking about this game without really talking about how it plays. So most immediate difference between the remake and the original is the movement and combat, which this plays so much more like Automata now, and it is a huge improvement over the original's really clunky and simplistic combat system. The enemies you fight behave mostly the same, so it hasn't turned into like a super technical Bayonetta-style action game or anything, but the simple act of moving around and attacking just feels so much better. Basically, if you've played Nier Automata, it's it's much closer to that than the original Nier in terms of movement. And believe me, coming from somebody who actually does like the original game, which I do, this is a huge improvement. Like, this is the one thing I would have complained about probably endlessly if they had not changed it. Because Automata represents such a huge step forward in terms of gameplay experience on top of the really innovative storytelling. And that's what we've got here. It's 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 very good. You can dodge. You can do air combos. Um, you can dash. It's probably the best addition. So you can get through some of the most barren environments a lot quicker than you could in the original. Um, but outside of combat, there's a few things that you can do, like fishing, which is very basic. Also farming, which outside of being an easy source of money, isn't super useful and there's not a lot to it, but it's there. Otherwise, the basic gameplay loop is pretty much the same. You take on quests, you beat up enemies, you collect the many crafting and quest-specific items lying around. Like There's dungeons, but they're mostly linear. It is not Legend of Zelda with intricate puzzle-themed dungeons or anything. But there are overworld areas and towns to explore. In towns, the NPCs are going to offer you side quests, most of which are very basic, like go here, get 10 of something and bring it back type things. Most of it's not terribly interesting, but the further you get into the game, the more interesting side quests will pop up. Most of them can be skipped, and you're not going to make the game a lot harder on yourself if you don't do them. So if something sounds tedious, just skip it. Just don't do it. There's no point. I remember reading like a whole flowchart people had made for the first game about what quests to do, and I kind of think that's a little bit of overkill. The side quest situation isn't that bad in my opinion. You don't need a flowchart or some kind of special system to deal with it. But just keep in mind that a lot of these side quests are inconsequential and do not matter if you finish them. Uh, like I said a while ago, um, the bosses are a huge highlight. These things are creative. They're really fun to fight. And there's a pretty large amount of them, too. Uh, some of the standard combat encounters can get a little monotonous as there isn't a lot of enemy variety. So again, the bosses are kind of a nice break up, but also combat encounters don't really go on for too long for the most part. So it's usually not a big problem. So gameplay is pretty good. Uh, what about the graphics? Well, you've been looking at them for a while, so you have probably some idea of what you're dealing with. But my opinion is that the graphics in the remake are clean. They're functional. They definitely look better than they did way back. That is partially due to some texture stuff, some resolution stuff, etc. And it definitely looks the best in cutscenes, like kind of similar to Nier Automata, where the style makes up for a lot of the technical shortcomings. Like, I don't know if you saw the original. It was a very washed out looking game, sometimes even unfinished in terms of visuals. So what we're talking about is significantly better, but like compared to other recent remakes like Demon Souls or even Shadow of the Colossus from 2018, that's not the type of thing that you should be expecting. It does not hold up to that kind of a thing. It, it does look better, but it's not that. Part of that is just because of the game itself. It's not an ugly game, but some of the environments are often pretty basic. Effects are good, and the new character models for the main characters look uniformly great. But beyond that, it didn't really wow us in any way. Everything about the presentation? Fantastic, though. Um, music is phenomenal. The new arrangement was brought on by returning composer Kiachi Okabe, and it is incredible. Like, seriously. In my opinion, better than the original's music. And that is extremely high praise because that soundtrack is phenomenal. It's just uniquely near. It's very haunting. It's tragic. It's 
all around epic. Like, can't praise the soundtrack enough. There's no way to. Like, I can't count the times I've just stopped the game and listened to the music. Same goes for Automata, but I want to say it, it particularly lands here, given the game is over a decade old. Also, the voice acting is very, very good. We've got very strong performances by veteran voice actors, and if you're a purist, you can change the Japanese voice acting as well. Uh, so, Near Replicant is a game that's kind of more than the sum of its parts. It is not easy to get into, and that is not different than the original. The quality of life stuff, like the revamped battling, definitely a big improvement, and it also definitely looks a lot better. But the world quests and dungeons play mostly the same, and they were a little outdated when the game originally came out in 2010, so today they're quite outdated. There is, of course, a lot more to the game than visual style and level design, because this game introduces new gameplay styles, it plays with the entire format of its own story, and it continually messes with your expectations in a way that honestly still feels fresh and new now. In some ways, the game is actually a little more surprising than Nier Automata because of its willingness to experiment and go in just totally bizarre directions. Not every single one of them work, I, I want to add, and, and sometimes it's not the most fun game to play, but like if you're looking for something interesting, I don't think that you can possibly pass this one up. So Nier Automata is definitely a more polished game, but I think that goes without saying. Um, Nier Replicant is still definitely worth checking out, especially given that they have given it a fresh coat of paint. Like, if you're a fan of the original game of Automata, or you're just interested in, like, weird, dark stories, you will see this game showing its age in some places. Some things feel outdated. But in other ways, the game feels modern in a way that not a lot of games really do. So, I mean... Playing around with the narrative in the way that it does is it's still innovative. Like it's not been a convention that has been fully implemented in the industry. And frankly, I would love to see more franchises experimenting in the same ways this one does. Obviously, this is a remake, has improved graphics, much improved controls. It's the definitive version of the game. Even though it doesn't look as nice as other recent remakes, it does have a unique style and that compensates. So while it's not an easy game to recommend because of how long it takes to get going, and to be frank, to really finish it, you have to repeat sections of the game a lot. But in our opinion, and particularly in my opinion, I, this is near and I'm a big fan of this series, it's definitely worth getting through that stuff. And if you played the original, there are new things to find in here, so it is worth coming back to as well. So, I mean, keeping all of that in mind, I cannot wait to see what Yoko Taro is working on next. But what do you think? Leave us a comment. Let us know. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We have brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe. Don't forget to enable all notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.